once more from the top and with feeling um this is a demo video for the wmd geiger counter uh the geiger counter is a device by wmd devices out of colorado um the geiger counter is a it's got a preamp on the input a tone adjustment followed by um a sample rate selection um bit rate selection and a wavetable a wave shaper with 200 and I believe 52 wavetables. Um, it's a fantastic bit of kit. It creates very, very bizarre things in ways you wouldn't have expected. Uh, this video is for the Eurorack module. There don't seem to be a lot of videos demonstrating some of the interesting features of the Eurorack, so I figured it was kind of... it needed some fun stuff to go down. Um, I'm going to kind of split it into short little parts. Uh, the first part will just be showing how important the wavetable is to the actual device. Um, I'm not going to be doing any real CV modulation during the first video. It's just to show how simple math applied to an incoming signal can really drastically change the resulting sound. In subsequent videos, I'm going to deal with CV modulation of the sample rate, CV modulation of the bit depth, and then finally, and probably my most favorite part of the module, CV modulation of the wavetable selection. Um, that said, let's kick things off. Uh, what we've got is doo -doo -doo -doo, a Nintendo DS running Korg DS10. Uh, I have a very simple dr I have a very simple drum pattern selected. That's clean. Um, currently, it's being run into a dope for a 119 envelope follower. That's the direct out. It's patched into the Geiger counter, so why don't we see what that's going to do? Right now, there is no gain, there is no tone adjustment, there is nothing moving on to the sample rate or the bit depth, and pure maths. Let's listen to what algebra does. Now that's just um, wavetable shaping. Um, it, there's a wide variety of wavetables available. We can peruse those. That one seems a little bit more conducive to the drone sound. Um, the input gain and the tone also drastically affect how the wavetable responds. So let's let's crank up some gain. We're losing some of the drum and we're getting lots of crazy. Let's produce some of the wavetables with this higher gain structure. I'm just turning up the level so it can be a little bit extra sexy. That's right. Um, that one does a good job keeping the progressive elements. Um, now let's enable the tone. More. It's not really doing much except making it a little more easy. Easily. Very much loving the high end in it now. Bring back the tone. Let's, uh, let's keep scanning wave tables. I guess what I'm trying to get across here is the idea that by only changing really the input gain structure as well as the wavetable, you can drastically, drastically change the resulting signal. And again, this isn't using some of the more interesting features. Um, for instance, the CV modulation of the wavetable is one of the coolest things. Just so I don't come off as a total tease and feel like I'm leading you on on a first date basis, um, we're going to take the gate output of the envelope which, if you see the threshold, is only being triggered occasionally. We're going to run that into the wavetable uh, CV input. Okay, now... Now whenever the threshold is crossed, it has, it's sending 
two valleys of voltage, like the standstill, and then when the production is crossed. So if you watch the wave table selection, which is the flashing character on the Geiger counter, it's one between two. And with more complicated modulates and short sources, you can really pull out some very bizarre polyrhythms. Um, I'll get around to that later. Um, also, in this little BD case, they built for A192, which is a MIDI 2 control voltage unit. Um, there's been a few really interesting videos of a sequenced Geiger counter up here, um, and I'll show you another way of doing it. Basically, um, the CV control of the wavetable is the primary reason why I went with the Euro rack. Um, currently, the pedal does not allow for that flexibility, and I mean, as you can see, it drastically, drastically changes the sound. Um, just for fun, um, I'm gonna adjust the sample rate in bit depth. I'm not gonna do any modulation, but. I'll show you respectively what they do. They deserve kind of chapters on their own because you can send them out masked or with the wavetable, um, resulting in very different characteristics. And there's a lot of options there. So to do them justice, you get another six minutes of garbage. But it's a sample rate reduction. Now it's like a repainting the drum sound with like three tones. It's like looking at like an eight color palette version of the drum sound. This is GIF it. This is, you know, internet GIF bullshit here. This is a GeoCities webpage. And then we can also reduce the bit depth. That said, I hope you found this weird little approaching 8 minute video interesting. Uh, I hope to be doing ones for bit crushing and sample rate reduction in the near future, and I strongly suggest anyone who's into thoroughly mangling things to consider getting a Geiger counter of some flavor or another. Um, it's a wonderful bit of kit, and I really cannot recommend it enough. So, thank you for your time, and 